I've got little doubt you've heard of tactical pistols before, but have you ever heard of a tactical revolver? Some people make the case, and it's a good case, that tactical is something you do or do with a gun, not a descriptor of the gun itself. Regardless, if you're anything like me, when you think of revolvers, you think old school, not cutting edge. That means no accessories, no lights, no accoutrements, no nonsense. But as it turns out, there are a few wheel guns out there that can take advantage of the best in modern accessories to improve accuracy, shootability, and tactical proficiency. In this video, we'll be looking at six of the best and only models out there. For years and years, Taurus was the butt of many jokes for their lack of quality, humongous recalls, and generally cruddy guns. But fairly recently, thanks to a big shakeup at the corporate level and the influx of some top-flight talent here in the U.S., the company is reinvigorated. And I'm thrilled to say they're producing quality guns again at modest prices. They're even pushing forward with some industry-leading designs. My favorite, by far, is the Model 605 Toro. In every regard except one, it is a basic 5-shot 357 Magnum with a 3-inch barrel. It's the kind of good all-around gun for self-defense that someone would choose to carry concealed or just keep stashed in the sock drawer for a close encounter at 3 a.m. But Taurus has made the decision to outfit the 605 with an optics mounting point, one that will accept any MRD using a hollow sun K footprint. That's it. It's a small frame magnum that can use a red dot sight. There's no additional rail on it, no crazy aesthetics, and nothing else besides that. This is the classic wheel gun that you know and love, but with the best in modern sighting technology. No matter how you slice it, that's a huge upgrade in performance under all conditions. If you want an all-purpose revolver that's just as much at home for self-defense as it is for carry, the 605 Toro from Taurus is one of the only, if not the only, optics-capable revolvers in this category on the market at the moment. Ruger revolvers are well-known and greatly admired for their sheer ruggedness. Compared to Smith & Wesson, Colt, and all the other manufacturers out there, Ruger wheel guns are known for being easy to work on, bomb-proof, and able to digest a steady diet of the most powerful magnum loads without loosening up. When it comes to pure fighting gun prowess, the GP100 is in a class by itself. Their flagship large frame 357 magnum has enjoyed many different variants over the years, but my current favorite is the 1789 variant. You get seven shots instead of the usual six, excellent Novak low mount sights with a tritium front sight, smooth rubber grips with checkered wood inserts, and the boring reliability inherent to all GP100s. I know some folks might balk at a shorter 3 inch barrel on a 350 57 Magnum because a longer pipe helps to get the most out of this legendarily effective cartridge, but seasoned revolver experts know that for a general purpose self-defense gun, the 3-inch barrel is the ideal length for maneuverability, carry, and overall effectiveness. This is the classic GP100 you know and love with an extra round, great grips, and superb combat sights. What's not to love? Another Taurus on our list, and one that I am sure has sent people scampering to the comments even now. After all, what self-respecting and self-proclaimed expert actually recommends a 44 Magnum for self-defense, or at least self-defense against people. With monumental recoil and titanic blast, even the mildest 44 Magnum loads are deep penetrating and difficult to control. That's true, but if you're only looking at this monstrous revolver on paper, you are missing the forest for the trees. Taurus builds nice revolvers, as I said earlier when talking about the 605, and the Raging Hunter is no different. Even though it's big and bulky with a shorter barrel, it balances well and is surprisingly nimble and most importantly for our purposes, it has a Picatinny rail on top of the barrel shroud that allows us to mount any optic we could possibly want for self-defense. With a compact optic, you could probably even mount a flashlight up there if it has an offset attachment point. As an added bonus, porting out near the muzzle helps to tame recoil when using stout 44 Magnum loads, but that wouldn't be my first choice, even with a low recoil type. If it were me, I would stoke the Raging Hunter with 44 Special to cut that recoil down to nearly meaningless levels in a gun this size. And even though you'll be somewhat limited when it comes to modern projectiles, you've still got good performers available from Hornady, Winchester, PMC, and others others. This is not a rig you're going to carry out of the house concealed, or at least I hope you won't try. But for home defense, this revolver has some serious tactical chops. We've got three more tactical revolvers to look at on our list. Really quick, before we move on, just take a second to click like and subscribe for me. Those two clicks help a ton here on the channel. 
Thanks so much. There's no denying that the Italians make some of the snazziest revolvers around. Heck, they even make some of the best modern reproductions of the most iconic American six guns. But never mind that, because they've got plenty of their own innovative designs to their name. Like the Chiappa Rhino. This revolver looks like it escaped from the prop department for a sci-fi made-for-TV movie. But it's more than just racy, spacey looks. Look beneath a giant vent rib and you'll notice that the barrel is mounted low, really low. So low that it is in line with and fires from the 6 o'clock chamber. This keeps the barrel virtually parallel with the long bones of the shooter's arm and works wonders to soak up recoil from even the stoutest 357 Magnum loads. The hexagonal cylinder is extremely strong but also flattens the profile of the gun and you should also notice that you've got Picatinny rails up top and below, perfect for mounting optics, flashlights, or lasers. The ergos are unique too, with a steep grip that promotes a high, tight hold and locked wrist, something that will further help to tame recoil. With a 6-inch barrel, it looks unwieldy, but again, this is a gun that balances well and is more than easy to handle in a home defense situation, though it is a lot to hide if you plan on carrying it. In any case, 6 inches is more than enough to maximize the 357 Magnum as it will allow it to build up blistering velocity. It's possible to have good looks and great capability in a single package with the Chiappa Rhino. If you've spent any amount of time as a hobbyist or enthusiast in the gun world, you've probably heard of Korth before. This German gunmaker is famous or maybe infamous is a better word for making ultra high-end revolvers that spare no expense in terms of craftsmanship or materials. Beautiful, accurate, and reliable, they are masterpieces of the gunsmith's art, and one of the exemplars in their lineup. And one of the most tactical revolvers around is the NXS 8-Shot, a 4-inch barrel 357 Magnum. Utterly gorgeous with its polished finger groove walnut grips and lustrous black DLC finish, more important for our purposes is the roller bearing trigger, which is so smooth, slick, and light it almost feels like there's something wrong with the gun. A full-length Picatinny rail extends from the top of the barrel shroud to the frame, and optional rails can be mounted to either side for lights, lasers, or weights. If 357 Magnum isn't your thing, you can easily swap out the cylinder yourself for a 9mm version, opening up possibilities for the very best in modern self-defense loads. These guns are genuinely one of a kind, and the only reason I don't have them higher on our list is because of their jaw-dropping, unbelievable price tag. MSRP for the model as described, without any other options, is $5,199. Good night. One of the first truly tactical revolvers ever brought to market is still one of the best. Smith & Wesson's N-Frame Model 327 TRR8 is an 8-shot, 357 Magnum designed from the ground up to make use of lights, lasers, and optics. You can bolt on or remove Picatinny rails that stretch across the top of the barrel and back onto the frame, or ride out near the muzzle underneath in a matter of minutes, and the silky smooth double action trigger makes fast and precise shooting a cinch even in high pressure situations. A performance center tuned action and fixed trigger stop will keep you in control even when shooting as fast as you can. And speaking of speed, the cylinder is relieved for half moon and full moon clips, facilitating the fastest possible reloads. Eight rounds of 357 Magnum should be more than enough to bring down anything that moves, but in these wasteful times, you can't be too careful. This is a big gun but it doesn't handle like one, thanks to its scandium construction. This high-tech and very expensive alloy keeps the weight down to a modest 35 ounces unloaded. The best possible fusion of old and new, Smith & Wesson's Model 327 TRR8 is the premier tactical revolver available. And with that, we've come to the end of our list and the end of the video. Tactical revolvers are a genuinely niche product, but one that wheel gun aficionados would be remiss to overlook. Whether you want a packable fighting gun for concealed carry or a feature-rich hand cannon for home defense, the models we looked at today are the very best available. I really want to know what you think about putting an optic on a revolver. Does it just make sense or is it something you can live without for simplicity's sake? Let's talk about it down in the comments and before you run, make sure you hit like and subscribe so you can keep up with all of the great videos here on guns you can't live without. Thanks for watching and have a good one.